So let's start the practical part and let's take a look at default tests that come with Laravel by default. You can see a folder called tests. Again, it's a fresh Laravel project. I didn't write any line of code. So there are feature tests and unit tests. And we will talk a bit deeper about the differences later in the course, but mainly most of your tests should be feature, which means you test some feature, whether it works or not. Unit tests are more about separate so-called units of your code, like a function test that the function internally works correctly. So we will focus most of that course on feature tests. And let's take a look what is the example test in the test feature folder. So example test is a class that extends test case and every test, like every feature to be tested is a function within that class. One class of example test or whatever you call that test may contain multiple functions. And in each function you execute some code and then test or so-called assert that something happened and whether it's correct or not. For example, in this case, we get the homepage URL and assert that the status, HTTP status of that request is 200, which means all good and okay. To run those tests in the terminal, we need to launch PHP artisan test, and it will execute everything that is inside of our test folder, whether it's feature or unit, the list is here. I will open it up in a bit bigger window. So within test unit, test that true is true and test the application returns a successful response. And those texts come from the naming of the function. So you can see the naming of the function with underscores. It's kind of in a human language. So you can read that test that the application returns a successful response. So in general, while naming the test functions, you shouldn't be afraid to have longer test names, longer function names, because those would be readable when someone will launch the test in the future. So both tests are successful. Now, what happens if the test fails? Let's simulate that by changing some of the tests. For example, one of the popular assertions is assert that the request contains some text. So response assert C, there is a function assert C and what text? If we go to our homepage, this is our homepage. For example, we can see the text documentation and that will pass successfully. If we relaunch the test, what do we have? Both tests passed. But if, for example, we look for another text, like for example, Symphony on the Laravel homepage, right? Then we relaunch the tests again, and now it will fail. So one passed test and one failed test. And inside you would see which test failed and on which line. And then it would also show the actual error test failed that it contains symphony. So this is the actual response, the HTML response from our homepage and the error, if we scroll a bit up. So this is the error example test the application returns successful response failed asserting that this HTML contains symphony. So this is how failed test would look like. Or let's see how it would like if we have two methods. So let's copy that. And we may even remove the comments because they are not really relevant here and test the application, for example, contains symphony, something like that. Test the application, test the home page, contains symphony. So this one will be successful and this one will be a failed test probably. Let's launch and PHP Artisan test gives us two passed tests and one failed. So each file of the test class should be related to some functionality and inside you test different parts of that functionality, like for example, one page and then various features of that page. So you can see how easy it is to start testing. Most of the tests are just launching some page or calling some API and then testing if it is successful or not. In fact, there is a different kind of test, specific kind of test called smoke tests, which basically just go through all the pages and test if the page returns 200 or whatever is the status code expected. Even that test coverage of all your pages of your application would be a great start to ensure that your application is working when you launch new features. All the other parts of the automated testing are about exploring different assertions and different ways how to simulate those different scenarios for specific pages or specific functionality. So we'll dive into that in the next lessons.